we do have our club president, Fernando Azevedo, and he will be presenting his educational entitled Vocal Variety. There will be no formal evaluation for this educational, so just to know not to expect that. And with that, I hand over to Nando from Vocal Variety. so many times I can't do it shorter. A message is pointless if it's not delivered properly. Okay? What is, what is vocal variety all about? Vocal variety is about tone, pitch, volume, most importantly presenting. Presentation. There's a lot of you, there's a lot of people in general who are terri absolutely terrified of coming here. And shy away. And in that shying away, you engulf yourselves and you engulf your voice. Vocal variety <coughs> is how you bring how you bring your essence of your message. And everyone thinks it's just about the volume. It's not. The first thing that you have to do when understanding to play with your tone, to play with your voice, is controlling your fear. Once you've got that down, then we can start playing with a few other things pitch, with your tone and your pace, which I'll tell, tell you a little bit more about today, and then most importantly is the body language. My favourite little one here that I'm going to put at the end is how to project your voice. I'm just going to give you a snippet of what everybody's going to learn on Sunday. Everyone's going to learn more because they pay. So, <clears throat> let's get on to the first thing. Most people are more afraid of, of death. Sorry, more people are afraid of speaking in public than they are of dying. It's very true. Okay? Where does it come from? There are guys out there and on YouTube and everywhere else that can give you a whole bunch of stories and a whole bunch of techniques to try and get over this fear and to try to conquer it and what ends up happening is that you're just putting a plaster on a bullet. For me, why was I afraid to get up and talk in public? But, but, but because I used to talk like this. This. At five, year, five years old, five, six years old, kids are bloody mean. <laughs> and it leaves a nasty scar. Mm -hmm. What really came to it? Or what really caused it? Unnaturally left handed. Doesn't make sense, does it? Mm -hmm. But it's actually true. It's a mechanical gesture. I came from a very insane uh, Catholic family who believed that people who were left-handed were possessed by the devil. I'm no longer Catholic, <laughs> all right? Uh, <laughs> because the exorcism obviously didn't work. Okay, so <laughs> but being forced into being right-handed created a mechanical kind of blockage between between the mechanical the portion of the of the brain that controls mechanical movement and where I would go naturally. Cut to grade two where I eventually learned to write with both hands and I'd go with my left hand because my left because my right hand would get tired because it's not my natural hand. 
and having a grade 2 teacher pulling, getting so angry with me, pulling my ear so far that it is now caught, that it caused a scar that I have to this day. Because she said, Pick the head that you want to help with! So naturally, I had a few issues getting up in front of people. The things that you have to understand is that you need to find out what their trauma is. And you need to understand that the people that are in front of you, to use a four-lettered vernacular, don't give a shit. They're there to listen to you. They're there to hear you. They're there because they want to know what you want to deliver. Whether it's information, or training, or a presentation, you have to remember that you're there to serve. And when you're there to serve, you need to get over those hangers. I'm not here for me. I'm here for you. Paul wasn't here for himself. He was here for you. That's what every speaker needs to remember. A few other little things to help you out. Unless you're at a medical conference, 99% <laughs> of your audience actually wants you to succeed. Yes, you have haters. At a medical conference, like 5% want you to succeed, but that's because they've got a massive chip on their shoulder. So what I do when, I help, when, I've, when I've helped doctors is I just tell them, whatever you're going to prepare in your information, you need to know that stuff backwards. And you need to remember that when you stand there in the front, that stage is yours. And the reason they don't want you to succeed is because they know they're not as good as you. Is it arrogant? Yes. Does it work? Yes! Because you need confidence to come up here. You need to learn that when you're up here, you're vulnerable, you're open. But that doesn't matter, because what matters is the message. A few extra things there that you guys can do that. Now let's get on to my favorite thing. I was taught how to sing. So let's start with a little bit of a vocal exercise. When you practice your scales, as a singer. <clears throat> you start with the easiest part, which is lower, and you start to go to a higher, to a higher pitch, and a higher pitch, up until you change octave. Most people actually have between one and two, have one between a one to two octave range. This whole thing of everyone saying, now I can't sing, I don't know how to sing, now I can't go, no, no. God, you're lazy. <laughs> Alright? Or you were never taught. So when you're practicing things by yourself, to learn how to get pitch up and down, start with scales. How's <laughs> <laughs> that for bloody timing? It was magical, it was like you turned it off with your voice. What have you summoned? Okay. No, I don't even present it this so many times. The other thing that you have to remember, guys, is you have to be gentle with yourself and continue to repeat. Continuously repeat your voice and your scales and your Continue to repeat your voice, your scales, and the different tones. Why? Because you need to exercise, you need to exercise this muscle. It is a muscle. And you need to learn to use it. After time, you can start to expand your language. Let's get it. Time and pass. 
Let's do something a little bit of fun. I want everybody to say the word to. T O. To. 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 Okay. Where is that sound coming out? The front. To the front. Your front. It's called front. So it's called front. Front. Now say P. 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 Okay. Where's that coming from? Lips. Yeah. It's the that's uh, okay. It's the lips, but the sound, the E sound. It's middle, middle. So this not quite the soft palate, it's still the hard palate, but in the middle. Okay? Now ka. Force it, force it. Ka. 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 Okay. That is coming from the soft, that's coming from the soft palate. From the back of it, from the back of the Where you force air is where you're going to get is where you're going to get your different tonalities. Okay? And then you can learn to play with that. Why do I use the t, the p, and the cut sound? Those are called explosive vowels. Which means that when I'm training someone, when I'm teaching someone to either change tone or increase volume, those are ways that they can't cheat themselves. Because a p, a k, a t, okay, you can't help but using an explosive sound. Whereas if you use a s or a n or a m sound, very, very easy, very, very easy to cheat and you end up cheating yourself. Enunciation. Without character, any message that you deliver is superfluous. <clears throat> Enunciation is about clarity of voice. English is what is called a drop jaw language. My first language is Portuguese, Latin based, very closed mouth. So that's why when you hear guys from Italy or from Spain, and they speak to you, they speak to you like this, you know, it sounds like they're almost Russian, but not quite Russian, you know? Because the mouth is constantly closed. In English, we call it, in English in training, in, uh, got the word, <laughs> excuse me? In elocution, excuse me, in elocution training, thank you. We train you to drop your jaw, to actually bring the sound out. It's also how we train people to get rid of their accents, if they have an accent. What I was saying earlier, body language. Don't cheat yourself. If you come up here and you immediately start talking down, or you twist your neck when you speak, you are immediately taking away the power of your voice. All right? If you're going to address someone, never turn your head and address them. You notice something that Paul did when he spoke to anybody. Basically, peripheral, peripheral ability moves away in public speaking. When you address people, you address them with your whole body. When you speak, you speak upright. The only time that you stop is when you want a message. And I drop my voice when I want you to listen closely. Okay? The man over there smiling at me is very, very good at that. Okay? <sighs> Gestures are helpful. Gestures are very helpful. But, at the right place at the right time. I'm trying very hard to speak without a crutch. What is a crutch? This is a crutch. Having notes is a crutch. My usual thing. Having to fidget with a pen because I'm nervous about being in front of you because I'm scared of you guys judging me about my weight. It's a crutch.
Get over. Shoulders back. Stomach in as far as you can. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, everyone here is here to listen to you and to appreciate you. I'd say that a lot of them care about you, but they're not going to sound like a lot of those guys from the Tory East. Yeah. Anyway. Now, the reason that most of you are here, you've done the Topeka exercise. Who here struggles with one? Alrighty. Exercise for you to do at home. See if I'm uh, two week, uh, last week, I told them I could get your volume up in 30 seconds. He said, no, you can't see it, watch. <laughs> okay, so here's a little trick. I'm going to do more on Sunday. Here's a little trick. Stand in front of the mirror and put your lips together, but don't put your teeth together. So in other words, just slightly apart, put your lips together and hum. But hum so hard that your lips start to vibrate. Okay, so Manus, would you like to be my guinea pig? No. <laughs> Alright, so let's stand. So lips together, make sure that your teeth aren't touching. Now force that hum as hard as you can. Does that sound like a motorcycle? Yes. Hum as hard as you can. Okay, were you a little bit out of breath? Yes. A little bit, a little bit dizzy? Not yet. Not yet. Okay, carry on. One more time. <laughs> Watch. One more time. Okay. okay. Now remember where the voice or remember where the sound was coming out of when you did that. Say hello to me with that same sound. Hello. There we go. <laughs> okay. Unfortunately, if you don't do it often enough, it does. It stays. It it goes away. It is something that your brain needs to learn, but it's a learned skill, so you have to practice it continuously. Okay. And. Guys, the whole thing is you only get better if you stand up. There's a lot of people that don't like the way the pathways things work and the way and the way uh, the different curriculums have changed. But there's no better place to learn than here. What's nice about Toastmasters is that anything that is here stays here. If you don't want to be recorded, you tell Stefan, listen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say some very nasty opinions that could get me fired, please switch off, all right, and he will do so. And then everything stays here. This, that's why I call, that's why we call Toastmasters the same things. I really hope that you guys benefited a little bit from this little educational and that you take a few tidbits and take them home with you. For those who would like to learn a little bit more, let me, let me tell you a little bit about Sunday the 26th. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.